The intent of this video is to discuss the implications of including or not including paint on the B-17 bombers. B-17 airframes are designed as a stress skin semi-monocoque construction where the skins are the main load bearing structures but do share the loads with the interior stringers and frames. The load pass between the skins, stringers and frames are through the rivet fasteners. The B-17's exterior aluminum skins are mostly fabricated from thin 24ST clad sheet. This alloy and temper is roughly equivalent to the modern day aircraft copper based aluminum 2024T4 clad sheet. Typical fuselage sidewall gauge is 0.032 inch thick, except where pad up reinforcement is required. This chart represents the skin gauge thickness of the B-17's unrolled fuselage. Clad aluminum is selected for its superior corrosion resistance over non-clad aluminum sheet. The clad layer gives the aluminum its shiny appearance. Clad aluminum is processed by roll bonding on a thin layer of pure aluminum to the much thicker, stronger aluminum alloy. The pure aluminum surface increases the corrosion resistance of the panel. Non-clad aluminum or bare aluminum will have a dull appearance, will not be as corrosion resistant, but will be about 10% stronger and adopted where additional strength is required. Some of the corrosion reduction of bare aluminum can be mitigated by an anodized conversion coating process. Some of the B-17 wing doubler reinforced panels are bare aluminum. The bare aluminum panels are highlighted in this B-17 wing skin gauge aluminum alloy graphic. The fuselage to wing carry through crown skin panels carry large loads. The B-29 crown fuselage panels are fabricated from bare aluminum. These panels have a dull finish since they are not clad aluminum. This chart outlines the B-29's fuselage panel aluminum alloys and gauges. The B-29 wing center section fuselage crown panels are twice as thick and 10% stronger than the adjacent forward clad aluminum panels. B-17 bombers flew its first mission in the European theater in August 1942. The bombers finishes were in a camouflage paint scheme. The upper exposed surfaces were olive drab green and the lower surfaces were a dull gray. The camouflage colors were selected to match the ground surroundings while parked on the space's hard stands and to blend into the skyline while in flight. In reality, it was difficult to hide daylight bombing operations given the bombers noise, contrails, and German integrated tracking radar. In February 1944, both the 8th and 15th Army Air Forces were receiving B-17s in the unpainted finished state. Bombers were delivered unpainted to mitigate production costs, reduce bomber weight, and speed up the delivery process. The production rate peaked in the first quarter of 1944 at about 17 deliveries per day. Bomber squadrons were sent on missions with some airplanes painted and some not. The bomber crews flying the unpainted airplanes were concerned that they would be targeted by the Germans since they stood out in the formations. The material command of the Army Air Forces conducted flight tests in March 1944 to determine the performance differences between a painted B-17 and an unpainted B-17. During the performance tests, a B-17G model was flown at various altitude speeds and power settings. Unfortunately, as we will see, these performance tests were conducted well after it was decided to eliminate the B-17's exterior paint. The camouflage exterior paint consisted of a two-coat system. First was a next-to-skin chromated primer base coat. Next with either a single coat of an olive drab color lacquer paint on all down-looking planform view surfaces or a single coat natural gray lacquer paint on all up-looking planform view surfaces. The weight of the primer and paint equated to 75 pounds. The plane's weight gain is based on the difference of the aircraft weight before and after painting. The B-17G flight test report speed power curve results are shown here. The x-axis is the B-17's true airspeed. The y-axis is the bomber's engine's torque brake horsepower. The family of curves are plotted test points for various altitudes and paint configurations. At the 24,900 foot test altitude, the painted B-17 flies 2 to 4.5 miles per hour faster than the unpainted B-17 at the same engine power. The speed increase trend was also consistent for the tested altitude of 5,100 foot. The study conclusion states a 
painted B-17 was two and a half to four and a half miles per hour faster than an unpainted B-17. It is speculated this was due to the paint wicking into the lap joint fillet surfaces, seams, and rivet head to skin gaps. This test shows a painted B-17 flies with less drag than an unpainted B-17. Another way to evaluate the data is to interpret these results under combat flight conditions. A B-17 will fly in formation at an indicated airspeed of 150 to 155 miles per hour. This equates to a true airspeed of 222 to 229 miles per hour at 24,900 feet. Extrapolating the painted data line for correlation shows an unpainted B-17 will need to increase its engine power by 3% to maintain the same airspeed of a painted B-17. Assuming that fuel flow is proportional to engine power, the unpainted B-17 will consume about 3% more fuel than a painted B-17 for the same mission range. A combat-ready B-17 holds around 2,700 gallons of fuel. An unpainted B-17 will need around 80 more gallons to meet the range requirements of a painted B-17. The crew's fuel burn of a B-17 is roughly 50 gallons per engine per hour, and assuming the test results premises are valid, at typical formation cruising speeds, a painted B-17 will have about a 90 mile range advantage over an unpainted B-17 when traveling at formation speeds. Also, 80 gallons of fuel equates to 490 pounds of weight. An unpainted B-17 will require 490 90 pounds more fuel to meet the range requirements of a painted B-17. The 75 pounds of paint weight more than offset the 490 pounds of extra fuel required for the unpainted B-17 to meet the painted B-17 performance goals. The extra unpainted airframe engine power requirements to maintain equivalent painted airframe speed is not likely experienced with the B-29s. Since B-29s are designed as aerodynamically clean air wetted surfaces, the B-29s airframe skin panels are joined with flush fasteners and skin butt joints. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.